you know, schedule-wise, the ACC plays Thursday games, especially at Virginia Tech, but this is in the Mac, it's a, a whole switch to the midweek games. So now you have this sort of half of a bye week. How do you use these extra days to your advantage here? Yeah, we're going to try to get, uh, we've got a lot of guys banged up, and we've got a lot of young players that uh, we want to move along fast. Uh, we're going to take these next couple days. Uh, we're going to do a lot of competitive drills against us to improve our football team, yet be smart with the guys that have played a bunch. We want to get them healthy. We want to get the young guys involved as much as we possibly can uh, so they can help us in this latter half of the season. And, um, you know, minusing the short week, this uh, schedule, um, I kind of like. I mean, th there's, there's some great opportunity to get healthy. Uh, minusing the short week, obviously, having the six-day turnaround, and I can't imagine doing the five-day turnaround, which I've done before in the NFL. But, uh, you know, so these next three weeks should be, uh, or next four weeks should be a, a great opportunity to improve our team. With these games, you get more spotlight being a midweek game. What do you hope to show on national television? You know what, we're not... I can, we're not concerned about that at all. We're concerned right now about uh, improving our team and uh, improving and getting uh, our team one step closer to where we want to be. So we've got a month left, and uh, we're going to try to do everything in our power just to improve uh, and get better. How do you integrate some of those young guys into what you guys are doing? Because I would assume that you're not going to play them a full 60. So how do you go about getting them playing time but still feeling? Well, this week is a great week to, to start that process, and we really have. We've started that process three, four weeks ago of integrating them into practice and getting them reps in practice because we knew at the end of the season we'd be playing them anyway. So uh, this is this long week. It's not a bye week, but it's a long week. It gives us uh, just a, more opportunities and more snaps to get young guys prepared for the next three weeks. You guys had the big bye week. You did the same thing and had a lot of competitive drills. Started to see things turn in the right direction in Notre Dame, then obviously one against Toledo. Do you think that can make a difference this time, help make them take the next step? Yeah, and there's no doubt, once our depth is uh, established uh, here, uh, the one thing that I've learned from um, being around those great coaches that I've been around is uh, you have to have competitive drills against your own team constantly to maintain the speed and to improve your football team. And uh, we had to cut those back uh, this previous week just because our depth and we're banged up and we really, uh, really just concentrated on Akron this week. And um, we don't want to do that in the, years, in the years to come. We want to make sure that we're having competitive drills against each other because that's how you improve. And uh, um, hopefully with a few years of recruiting, we're able to establish that depth and that's how you build your football team and improve your football team. Going on the road, you guys have yet to be competitive in the second half of the road game. What's the next step on the road? Yeah, you know, we got to, just like you said, we've, we've generally handled it quite well in the first half. In the second half, we have not. Uh, so to be able to play a full 60 minutes on the road will be outstanding. And hopefully with uh, being able to get some guys, other new blood on the field, I, I'm hoping that our that our depth problems won't be as horrific as they've been in the past, which keeps you in the game longer. And um, you know, we're going against a good Miami team, and I think Chuck's done a great job of building the program. I think he's done it right in terms of um, he hasn't went the JC route, he hasn't went too much of the transfer route. He tried to build it with high school kids, and it's taken it's taken a little bit of time, but uh, I think. Uh, I think he's done it the right way, and I think their football program will just continue to improve and grow and build. And uh, yeah, I think they do a great job down there. What was the team like after that Akron win? Were they refreshed, and what do you think that does for a, a final push at the end of the season? I think they were excited uh, for our seniors. You know, we made it a big week all week long that this is the last Saturday they'll ever play in the Doit, and I thought uh, I thought we were very mature about that this week. I thought. Uh, I thought the seniors did a great job with leading. I think the younger players knew how important it was to, to watch the older guys go out victorious. So that was a step and a positive step. Again, a lot of things that people don't see right now. I thought we were very mature how we handled that, which is a, a step. And Andrew talked to the post game coach about goals. There's still goals that can be achieved. Talk a little bit about goals you still have. To yeah, and our goals are daily. I mean, it is a one step at a time. Um, 
just like I said, the, the improvements, um, a lot of the fans, a lot of you don't see, um, but we need to have those improvements in order to eventually get the results that everyone sees. So every day we're working with mentality, attitude, um, getting bigger, getting stronger, learning um, how to do business day in and day out. That's, uh, that's again, the, the biggest challenge right now of teaching these young players and players that haven't been accustomed to how you have to actually prep, uh, the intensity that it takes to, uh, to improve weekly. So those are all things that, those are my major goals right now, those, those things that you don't necessarily see right now, but I just know that they need to get solved fast in order for us to give and show the results of, uh, of victories and what have not. So those, uh, those uh, mysterious goals that no one sees are critical for us to get to where we want to go. Greg, you had no big river recruits here last Saturday too. Good to get a win in front of some. Yes. Yep. That's uh, that's going to be the uh, make or break for us. We got to do a great job over these next three years, uh, really getting a foundation here of of uh, really quality quality players and quality people. I think this class uh, has that, and uh, we're going to continue. We got to hold on to them, and. Uh, you know, we got to get a few more. So that's going to be a major emphasis these next couple of weeks, too. Miami's a little bit like Western Michigan. I believe they haven't lost at home this year, same way when you guys are going to Western. So what challenges does Miami pose, especially at their point? Well, they play great defense. And uh, any time that you play great defense, you got a chance to, uh, to, be, uh, to win. And that's what they do. They, they, they play really good defense. I like, how, what, I like how they built that program, and I like how you know, defense is a major emphasis with them, and that's huge. And there's not too many um, places out there that still do it that way, and they do. And uh, that's why they're winning at home, and that's why they're a good football program. They play defense. One of the seniors that's been to let you guys, Nico is one of the few guys that has wrote it out here his whole career. What has he meant for you guys um, in a leadership role, and then also uh, where does he come as a player? Yeah, he's a first class guy. I love him. I wish uh, I wish he was going to be in our program for the next five years. Uh, he plays hard. It's important to him. He cares about his teammates. Uh, he's a BG guy.